Sharon, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for having me. Where are you <laughs> with your cat? Uh, I'm here in the Netherlands, in the middle of the Netherlands. Uh, it's called, well, very close to Utrecht, which is a big city. Uh, but I'm in the suburbs of Utrecht, so it's really nice here. But uh, like you see, there's still some green to see. But the coming days is going to be like minus nine, and it's going to be 20 centimeters of snow. So it's <laughs> one of the last times I can be in my garden, so I'm going to take the advantage that I still can so <laughs> now you have to enjoy the garden because maybe not the next days <laughs> you no, can. no exactly exactly <laughs> okay uh, well the first thing um, uh, I've been listening the the last singles of Within Temptation uh, and uh, I felt a, a huge difference between for example uh, the the pure sun entertain you uh, and uh, Mother Earth, for example, which had yeah. uh, the 20th anniversary the last yeah. month. Um, uh, did how do you feel your music when you listen different the different songs, songs or or albums yeah. because are well, quite different. Yeah, of course. I think, uh, of course, we've been around for such a long time and we've always tried to sound a little bit different. And I think we succeeded in that. Um, although I do think there's a lot of elements in, in our music that will always glue them together. O although there is very much difference, like you said, with Mother Earth or a song like The Purge or Entertain You. It's, uh, it's very different from each other. But still, we've always been like that because I think even in within on the Mother Earth album, there were songs which were little bit different from for, for instance um i think uh, well maybe not on mother earth but maybe for instance with the first album even with enter there was some kind of difference even you had more uh, you had male vocal growling voices we didn't have that on mother earth anymore and it was a huge thing for everybody <laughs> and nowadays but we keep on exploring of course um our boundaries and sometimes we go a little bit too far even for ourselves and sometimes it's just within the limits and we're just testing always uh, Entertain You was a really uh, an, an uh, experimental song, I guess. It's very different from what we've done also visually uh, with artwork and stuff like that. And I think The Purge was a little bit more close to what with Temptation, uh, what people can expect from with Temptation, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, you released your last um, full album, Resist, uh, on 2019 uh, or 29. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But uh, you have released two songs uh, the last year, uh, in 2020. Um, are you changing the way of releasing music? Now, will you release just singles, not full albums? Uh, well, for us, uh, this is the first time that we're actually uh, releasing singles without having released the album with an album already finished, you know, because, of course, when you've finished an album in the past, we would release one or two singles and then the album will be released, but we don't have an album, actually. <laughs> so we have released two singles, but we don't have full-length album recorded, not even written yet. So we are releasing along the way, and we're um, and that's something totally new for us, And which the advantage of that is that when you feel a certain song because you feel the, the need to... Well, to, to address certain subjects, or we have a, uh, a song that has certain kind of vibe that really fits in that moment instead of releasing it in two years, what normally would happen. And it then already would feel outdated with the way we the production is or something. Then it's really nice to really release it now in the moment. Hmm. And do you think that, um, not the future, but do you think that this is the present for the bands? Uh, releasing songs every... Um, a few months or something like that. Well, you know, in, in other um, uh, styles of music, they've done this for a longer period, like dance and music, and, and there are more um, uh, music styles, uh, music genres who, who are already doing this. But for uh, the rock and metal, it's a little bit different because we have a very dedicated fan base still, and where I think some uh, music genres have a little bit more, well, a different dedication of fans probably a different way of dedication i guess and the fan base of i think metal and rock is really still dedicated to buy an album a full-length album physical uh, <laughs> product also still and so uh, that's different so that's why we are a little bit behind in that way of releasing songs but i think because of the streaming platforms also because of this pandemic i guess it came into uh, like a 
um, a fast forward kind of feeling. Uh, people are, I think a lot of people are actually doing the same thing as we are doing now, releasing just in the moment without an album. Because they're stuck at home, they can write, and everybody has a home studio nowadays. So it becomes also a little bit more easy. Hmm. And uh, what I felt is um, nowadays uh, people used to tag the music. For example, maybe in the Mother Earth times, uh, you were tagged uh, as symphonic metal, for example. But now uh, uh, it could be quite different because uh, uh, when I listened to um, The Pure or Entertain You, uh, it remembers me some sounds like, for example, Bring Me the Horizon, oh, which really? is, uh, yeah, the instrumental part. <laughs> Because we love them. <laughs> <laughs> the instrumental part uh, had elements uh, w which I said, oh, it's similar like the last uh, album. Uh, so uh, do you think that that modern style nowadays is uh, at the same time that this new kind of um, way of releasing music, single by single? Well, I must say that... Um, uh... What, what does inspire us is new um, uh, new core uh, bands. Um, it's it's uh, it's like um, it has a lot of um, elements that we like because it's it's the new well, it, it's a new sound in a way. It's nice, and of course we've always tried to implement uh, new things, new sounds production wise in our music, and we've done that throughout time until before as we started as a band. And you always listen to what you. What inspires you, of course, and uh, I think um, so. There, th that is a way that we like, of course. But there will always be. There's always, um, you know, limitation is is not a formula, but it, it's something that's constantly moving, it's changing. But still, the hardcore thing is still the same, which is uh, the heavy guitars, my vocals, which is a very uh, something that you will recognize, I guess, in a way. But um, but sounds is something that's always evolving, and we've been around for almost 25 years. So, and we like to evolve along with uh, with new uh, new sounds and everything. So we get inspired by bands around us which are doing that. Hmm. Um. Well, uh, now the main topic of of the interview. Um, I would like to talk to you about the situation of the of the women uh, in the music industry and the metal scene. Uh, and you are you have one of the largest careers of the woman in in metal, and I would like to to know how have you seen the evolution of the of the women in in that world? Well, what I see is uh, when you present more when you when there is a certain success with uh, um, with bands and they have, for instance, a female vocalist, it will it will um, put a seed in little girls' minds, like, oh my God, I can do that too. And I like this music and and she's doing it, so why can't I? So uh, you see always when there's a su success somewhere that other people um, will get to know uh, the music and it's e easier accessible in a way. And it will reach out also to uh, more people than people in, in intention in the first moment think because in the beginning when we started there weren't many uh, ladies in metal actually hardly <laughs> um, my examples were for instance uh, Sheila E behind drums were by Prince and I was like oh how cool <laughs> but I never saw it in metal but I got only in contact with metal when I was a little bit older when I met Robert actually and also before him I had already uh, got in contact with a little more heavier music and but um, there were no ma no women in there. But I never saw that as a a reason not to be in metal. I just did what I thought was cool, and I I didn't care if people didn't like it. And it, you did see that there was uh, you had some uh, doors to open because it was uh, rare and strange, but also an advantage because you were different from all those other bands <laughs> who were, had, were uh, male fronted, of course, because there was way more of that than uh, yeah, female fronted, of course, in a way. And you appeal to uh, a, a new group of people that was, wasn't was seen in the metal. And there was a lot of girls out there who did like heavy music, but didn't know it yet. And so, yeah, I think um, what you see is when you expose, give a, a stage to ladies, there will be more ladies in, in the future who will join them eventually because they think, hey, this is cool, I like this, I can be like that, I, I want to be like that, I want, I love this music. And that's cool, I think that's a, a beautiful thing. Hmm. And um, do you feel some 
press or, or something like that uh, for being one of the first uh, most popular women in this in this heavy metal scene. Do I uh, feel what? Uh, pressure. Pressure. Um, not 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 really. I'm thinking if there's could be any way of no. Uh, the only pressure that I really feel is uh, for myself is musically. It's like trying to come up with a song that I really. Uh, fall in love with myself and then I hope it will reach out to others but it's not because I'm a woman or no I don't feel any pressure at all nowadays the um, the um, the social media uh, yeah. are a, a way of promotion for the bands but yeah. sometimes uh, the fans are not uh, focused on the music are focused on the appearance or yeah. how the musician looks How do yeah. you think uh, it has affected uh, to the fans or to the, um, to the female uh, musicians or to the bands? And, you know, because I think you're always judged also outside of the scene on your looks. And, on, you know, that, that's the th first thing people see, of course. And um, I don't think, uh, I think if, you know, you have great looks, but you sing horribly or you play horribly or you, you make lousy music, nobody will be a fan <laughs> eventually. <laughs> So luckily, it will also be about music, of course. What I do find difficult sometimes is when you grow older is that you see, uh, you know, Mick Jagger still on stage and everybody's like, oh, that's amazing. And I think that's so cool that he's, you know, the whole band is still, you know, uh, want to play live and everything uh, when they can, of course, now. But um, when, but when uh, there are ladies in metal or maybe uh, uh, even in music in general, people say like, for instance, Madonna, for instance, It's like, oh, she gets old. Oh, she should really be doing this. And I think, my God, my Mick Jagger is way older than she is. You know, <laughs> what's the comparison? That's something that I do, do uh, think is everybody should make their own mind. And I think we're in a transition time, probably that we're gonna see people um, continue with music even though they grow older. And just as long as they have fun, I think everybody should go for it. Madonna, go for it. <laughs> 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 Madonna is immortal, I think. <laughs> I think so too, and I sh and she should be, you know. <laughs> she should do whatever she feels uh, good about and you know uh, comfortable with, and that's and and it goes for every lady in music, I think, and 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 men as well, you know. I I think it's cool that there's still uh, people still just going for the music. It's it's music that drives them. You know, and and it's a passion, and as long as people have that passion, let them. Mm -hmm. And do you, during your whole career, have you had some uncomfortable situation with fans when you have been on tour, or when some of the people working in the music industry just for being a woman? Uh, well, of course, you have sometimes. Uh, I've had some, but I must say, compared to uh, fellow colleagues in the in the, in the, in, the, in the music, I've heard uh, recently. I was talking to someone about this, and um, compared to her, I hardly have had anything because people already knew. You know, Robert is my is my partner. He's in the band. He's always around. So I was always somehow always having backup. You know, and but I think there's a lot of ladies out there who didn't have that backup and. And it is, you know, the world is still a man's world. Uh, how um, how much we want to change it. Have you felt that the industry or some label uh, sexualize the um, the appearance of the of the look of uh, women just for increase the for increase the sales? Of course. And of what course do you think is. about that? Well, it's like I think it's uh, it's. You know, it depends a little bit because uh, when when it happens, uh, when when you're a woman, it always happens like that. But in uh, when you're a guy, it also sometimes happens. If you're in a boy band or Billy Idol, for instance, he was, of course, uh, you know, it, sex sells. It's it's the way it works, and 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 unfortunately, um, it's the way a lot of people think they should sell music. <laughs> But it, it, you know. Um, But I think you should look at a person's identity and what fits a certain person or musician or and uh, it should be her or his choice how he wants to present himself. And because if you don't feel comfortable with it, you, you know, um, people will notice immediately. And 
uh, it will work against you in a way. And I think, of course, I'm not. And, and besides the fact that I totally think it's wrong, <laughs> but you know, it, um, yeah, a lot of bands when they sign for the first time, they're really happy to have this contract. Yay! They don't really think about how the record company is gonna present them. You know, it's they just happy that they can present their music and everything else is something that comes on which they have never well maybe most of them maybe didn't really think of at first and uh, it's something they have to they well how do you say it it's like uh, you think you it's all about the music but then when you get a record deal everything else comes together it's like okay oh my looks oh okay uh, what kind of um, what kind of well, everything er, everything you do everything i remember that when, when we did enter album for instance we had this book and it was a Bible. And we just wanted to have an old book and we would just fold it open. And, and people searched so many things within a cover of an album. It was a, the, the picture inside of Enter. And there's a book open. And uh, people started even reading. <laughs> the magnifying glass. It's like, <laughs> book it was a really old uh, Bible. And I just grabbed it out of the, out of, uh, the, the shelf just by accident, I just needed an old looking book for this, for the, for the photo. Uh, and sometimes people just also look, uh, look too far beyond, uh, you know, for messages in things that are not a message. <laughs> <laughs> so Consp conspirations. <laughs> <laughs> people always like search for stories behind the story and, and which is good because everybody should have their own idea about it, but sometimes they go a little bit too far. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how have you seen the evolution of uh, Within Temptation fans uh, since uh, social media exists and you use it? Um, you mean, okay, um, how we have we seen social media exist? Well, you know, you see that... <laughs> <I'm thinking>. Processing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's when when social media is um, so. You, what you're asking me is like how how it has been growing uh, from the beginning till now, social media and how we have adapted it, and also how our fans have adapted it. Yeah, That's your and, question. and how has changed the kind of fan of the band? If <laughs> if it's the same fan, if you look back at uh, the first uh, the first years of uh, the century of uh, if you compare it with nowadays fans, you no. know? Well, you know, um, the funny thing is we have this, of course, we can have, uh, we, we have looked at that because we were curious, like, how much have we changed? And um, I must say, even with uh, social media, I think it's more, everybody uses it now. So I think, um, and of course, people come and go as a fan sometimes, and but there's a lot of people who also stayed. And if you look at, the, if we, we were curious, like, okay, what's not, what is the typical Within Temptation fan? And it actually starts, we, we've looked it up because we have all this information nowadays, also on the backside of, of all the social media, of course. And it says actually very early on, like uh, uh, half teen, like 15 years old until, you can't say, 15 years uh, until <laughs> five, we have fans. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Which I'm very proud of, of course, because it's like, wow. You know, it's a little bit like what I what what I admire so much from Iron Maiden, for instance. They have such a huge, broad uh, group of people that like their music, like mm, old and new fans. Like they, they have grandpa. Uh, you know, you have dad who took son, and now dad became grandpa, and his son took his uh, his son again. And they it's three, uh, three generations of people are watching your show, and that's. Of course, uh, there are not that many people who are 75 that listen to our music, of course, but they are there. I remember that we were playing in America and there was this guy and he was there with his two sons and I, he was in front of the stage and he gave me a letter and I was like, oh my God, it's like, wow, you know, he was like almost 80. And he <laughs> said, like, I'm, I'm taking my two sons to my favorite bands. And after this show, I'm going to see Nightwish and I'm going to see that band and that band. So wow, you've got a whole planning. <laughs> and everything was the schedule. Like, yeah, it's like, wow. And he says, yeah, that's my wish list, my bucket list. And and we came back like three years later doing more or less the same kind of venues in America. And he was there again. I was like, you're here again. Again, front of the stage. You remembered me. Of course I remember you. 
<laughs> oh. That was amazing. And that was, yeah, that was really special. And he was like, I think he was like, well, really, seven, well in the 70s and at 75, 76, I don't know. Yeah, so I was really like, oh, really, yeah, yay! <laughs> <laughs> I can think about my grandpa's in a metal concert. I don't know, but I can imagine that. <laughs> no, well, I don't know. What is your age, actually? Oh, uh, <laughs> 26. 26, well, um, well I'm, I'm 46, so you could have been my son. And my dad, actually, uh, he's not here anymore, but if he would have been here, he would be six, 70, 73. And uh, but he loved heavy music, so he was into Deep Purple, into mm -hmm. uh, Black Sabbath, um, all kinds of music. Also Elo, uh, also um, you know Eagles, um, Chris Ria, you know a lot of stuff. He loved music in general, but also heavy music, heavier music. And so that's there you have three generations, you know. It's like <laughs> yeah. I've been in a Metallica concert with my with my mother, for example. My mother uh, oh, is. She is oh, 53 <laughs> but she, she showed me metallica when i was a kid i don't yeah. know my age and and i was uh, not not the last year because there was it coronavirus was here but two years ago i i was with her in a in a concert and it was amazing but if i think in my grandpa for example uh, which is uh, 80 yeah i can't think about my grandpa in a in a metal no. concert ah. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, you have, um, oh gosh, um, they have, you know, they're, they are there because they were the first ones making heavy music, the, the, you know, around the 70, 80 uh, uh, year old people now were one of the first to make the heavy music of the start of. So they are there, but there are not that many probably anymore around <laughs> because of age, but I think, uh, yeah, they are there. I will propose to my to my grandpa or to my grandma going with me to a concert. You know, maybe, yeah, yeah. Introduce he, us. He will say, "I can go to the bar, but you go alone. Yeah. <laughs> leave me, leave me here. Leave me here with some headphones on." <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so, Sharon, uh, thank you very much for your time. I hope yep. you resist the, the cold there in, in the Netherlands. <laughs> yes, resist. <laughs> and, and you enjoy your garden with the cat, which is uh, walking around yeah. <laughs> during yeah. the interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much and have a lovely day in Spain, where it's much nicer at this moment than here in the Netherlands. But uh, yeah, I'm jealous of you guys. So uh, until next time. Have a great day. <laughs> YouTube. Bye, Sharon. Bye. -bye. Yeah. <laughs>